Do you have a suggestion for an amazing impact guest? Go to impactpodcast.com and click be a guest to recommend someone today. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. This episode of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by CO2.com. Companies today are trying to figure out how to achieve high-quality climate credentials. CO2.com is the easy button for any business to go beyond offsetting and fund truly impactful projects across carbon, nature, and community. CO2 provides verified metrics that can be used in reporting and messaging. Have confidence in demonstrating your climate leadership. Go to CO2.com to access quality climate credentials you can trust on the road to net zero and nature positive. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. This is a very special edition. We've got with us today on the Impact Podcast, Ross Mackay. He's the founder and CEO of Daring. Welcome to the Impact Podcast, Ross. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Very excited to be here. I First of all, I love the name. and We're going to talk about how you came up with that name in a little while. But before we do that, first talk a little bit about where you're from, Ross. I know you're in Los Angeles today. I'm in Fresno. Um, but you're not originally from L.A. Where are you originally from and how do you even get where you are now? Uh, uh, how this journey get you here? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, you, you may hear my accent. Definitely not from definitely not from the U.S. Um, been here a couple of years and we'll get into that. But originally from Scotland. Oh, um, yeah. I grew up in Scotland. Uh, considering what I do now, it sounds you know very contradictory scotland's very well known for beef and salmon and of course whiskey but yeah. uh growing up actually i played a lot of sport played a lot of tennis um quite competitively actually played for scotland andy murray's mom was my coach judy wow uh and it shaped a, a lot of my junior life you know the the athlete uh in me um you know i was you know very much you know focused on you know performance nutrition recovery and a lot of that is very much fundamentally as a result of what you put in your body so very early on at a young age i learned you know this common saying you are what you eat and i was john i was eating a lot of animal protein or i was told to eat a lot of animal protein because fundamentally it's quote unquote the healthiest way to live it's the best way to perform and um fast forward i was 16 17 years old and stopped playing tennis as competitively and kind of took a step back and looked at what I was eating, if I felt good from it, if it made me feel great, if it made me look great as well as, um, you know, often people do and decided that, you know, I wanted to go in a different direction. I uh, stopped all animal products, cut out my whey protein, cut out chicken, cut out eggs, cut out dairy. And as cliche as it sounds, I felt great, I felt like a new man. And uh, that led me into the plant-based journey, it led me into trying many different types of products, as I'm sure you've tried yourself along your journey. Yep. And um, what I found was there was something missing within health. Um, there was something that was, you know, great on taste, maybe good on texture, but fundamentally always contradicting health. Long list of ingredients, often ingredients that made you know no sense to me, maltodextrin, carrageen, gums, TiO2. And I felt like as an entrepreneur that in me, I wanted to create something that I was felt was missing. One, focused on chicken, my favorite protein at the time. And two, something truly healthy, something short, relatable ingredients, something really strong for macronutrient, high protein, low carbs, low fat. And that led me into creating Deering, venturing over to the U.S. to try and raise some capital and try and uh, follow in the footsteps of many great brands that have done some awesome things in the space. So I've been here since January of 2020. Wow. Um, not so long. And we've been trying our very best to scale daring since then. So I'll pause for a second. Yeah, that's great. And how, how old are you now, Ross? You I'm mind. 31. I'm 30. All the plants making me look, you know, 16, but you, I am 31. You you look, I was saying, you, you, what do you, you, know, you look like you're tw 20 years old. It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's yeah. really, it's really amazing. So when you were switching from your high protein, animal protein diet, um, to plant-based eating, 
who was or uh, is mm. your guiding light? Did you, did you read a book? Did you did you listen to a podcast? Was where where and whom was sort of your inspirational guiding lights? Yeah, a number of different resources. You know, uh, you know, the data was young then. There wasn't as many right. people tracking performance and recovery. True. You know, following a plant-rich diet. Um, you know, uh, I think a friend of yours, Rich Roll, was actually a, a great inspiration yeah. for me. I was watching him cook a vegan mashed potato with his wife on YouTube many years ago, almost ten years ago, and yeah. started to play around in the kitchen myself and realized that actually you could enjoy food without the use of animal products. So number of different resources, a number of different quote unquote influencers early on activating in the space. And um, obviously today you can, you know, you just don't have to look far to see many people promoting uh, education around the benefits of a plant-based diet. That's, that's, I, I, I so agree with you. As my audience knows, I've been a vegetarian. I'm 60 now. I've been a vegetarian approximately 43 years and a vegan, about 11 or 12 years. And, and finding ultra was one of my great inspirations. I mean, Rich, is not only an inspirational human being as, as people go, but what he put in Finding Ultra, I think has changed so many people's lives. So I was just wondering if that was one of one of yeah. the data points that got you going and got you got you pumped. And um, you know, you so you came to America. Had you raised, had you developed a product before you came to America? Yeah, we um I remember getting dropped off at the airport in Glasgow International, uh, January 2020, I think January 4th. My mom and dad said, I'll see you in a week. Uh, I haven't been home yet, John. Um, <laughs> I, and that's, that's, you know, and uh, I will. I mean, I have plans to do so. But what, the reason I say that is I had, you know, north of $2,000 around in the, uh, in the account. We had about 2.3 pounds of product um, samples um a bench scale and uh i went over to the us went over to new york we had family and friends capital you know a few like i said a few thousand dollars mm -hmm. and this money was meant to last me until one i found more capital or two like i said i got a flight home and i haven't been home yet so wow. um a lot of the last few years have been building the the balance sheet to support the the, the audacious goals and vision we have and uh, a couple months into being in america obviously COVID hit which put definitely a spanner in our launch strategy or even our, our whole vision um, uh, across the channels. But what was important then is the importance of health, the importance of plan based being, you know, very, very, very much top of mind for a lot of investors as they've watched the success of Beyond Meat, the success of Impossible penetrate the market. And coming to the US was something different, something focused on chicken, something focused on clean and, and, and healthy. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have seen the pattern recognition of what it takes to scale a company. And fortunately I landed on my feet here and we've done a couple raises in the last few years to support the business. Well, hello to mom and dad back in Glasgow. And I've been to your great country, your homeland. And I just think Scotland is just, the people are unbelievably warm and, the, and it's just some of the prettiest countryside uh, on the planet, frankly speaking. Um, uh, what, what you didn't share with your parents then was uh, the, the week, a week in the life of an entrepreneur is a very long period. It could be yeah. a very long period. But, you know, what, I, what I'm also fascinated with is the immigrant story. I mean, my family's third generation now. I'm third generation Armenian, but you're now first generation. You come over here and, I, and, I, and there's something to immigrants and being entrepreneurs that I find the common themes in terms of why do some folks succeed and others don't? in terms of uh, your resilience, your flexibility, and your grit. Uh, do you find that to be true, that, 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 that those are three of your, your traits that when you came over here, you were determined to make this work? Yes, fundamentally, yes. I think the USA is a place that allows you to dream. Yeah. Um, it really does. And I, it sounds like the back of a postcard or something, John. <laughs> um, but I, the reason I say this is, you know, just a week prior to flying here with the same product, yeah. pitching to investors, pitching to retailers, pitching to restaurants in my hometown, yeah. people laughed. Is that incredible? And you, are week, a, and you are a hometown hero and you think they'd all want to just rally around you and, and, and you know, lift you on your think, shoulders. I think, you know, definitely not a hometown hero, but the, um, you know, again, a week later at the U.S., people got it. There, you know, there was there was people that I was able to connect with that had seen, you know, great products. They'd seen, you know, they understood the big market, the the opportunity, 
and I think it just where where I grew up, there's a many, like you said, it's a beautiful country, but um, not many um, entrepreneurs have built and skilled businesses uh, there and launched them in America. I felt I had to be here. I had to be around bigger thinkers necessarily, bigger TAM. You eat a lot of chicken over here in America and access to capital um, to scale the company. We're going to go into that in a second for our listeners and viewers who have just joined. Uh, we've got Ross Mackay with us. He's the founder and CEO of Daring. We're going to be talking about naming this great brand and also what I experienced with your wonderful products. These are just two of the uh, great sample products that you were kind and your team was kind enough to send me and I've tried already. We're going to talk about that. But to find Ross and his colleagues and their great chicken products, uh, plant-based chicken products, please go to www.daring, D-A-R-I-N-G, daring.com. Ross, now you're a very humble guy because if I was sitting in your shoes, I probably would have led with, well, John, my investors were and my investors are, but you didn't say that. But I'm just going to share with uh, our listeners and our viewers, among your investors, as a stranger coming to this promised land, you've happened and 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 found a way to land Drake, Steve Aoki, Naomi Osaka, and Cam Newton, among others. How, that sounds like a magic trick. I mean, like, the, how did you how did you find a way, as a stranger in this promised land with not a lot of dough in your pocket, to meet these folks and convince them to invest in your delicious products? Yeah, um, you know, I think to the listeners, I think raising money and building a great business are separate things. I want to start with that. I um, fully agree. We're focused on you know the latter, building a great business, and we've been successful at raising money. Let's see if we can be successful at building a great business. Not, yeah. um, you know, we uh, our first investor was a company called Mavron Ventures. Uh, a gentleman Dan Levitan partnered with Howard Schultz to. Uh, look at early stage companies, um, and then very quickly after that, we were fortunate enough to raise you know money and an investment from some of the names there, along with you know more prolific crossover funds like D1 Capital, um, you know Founders Fund. Peter Thiel led our last round of funding as well. So really, an influx of great investors, individuals that have seen um, companies go from obscurity to ubiquity very quickly and, and, and challenge big markets. But I think overall, the uh, the alignment in mission. Um, the alignment in putting capital to great use. Um, you know, it's not often where you can essentially create real value for not only consumers, but also the sustainability, the ESG impact of what we're doing day to day. And I think as you look at the investment horizon, that has become more and more important to investors and LPs across the landscape. Also celebrities, you talk about individuals like Drake, Cam Newton, Naomi Osaka, you know, there's sponsorship deals every day. They walk out the door, but where do they want to put their name behind? The days of attaching themselves to the Coca-Colas necessarily are not as exciting, even though the paychecks are real. Um, so I think, you know, it's a mixture of impact and great product. And, you know, part of my my role as a CEO and many other, you know, I would say other CEOs' responsibility should be to set the vision, build a team, if that's internal and external, and to fund the company. That is a That is a responsibility. How much of how much of data have you raised approximately? Um, just north of 120 million in the last uh, year and a half. I think, mom and dad, if you're listening, I think it's time to come over to, to LA and visit Ross because I don't think he's going home anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, I, I will <laughs> soon, but they're welcome here anytime. <laughs> hey, so you raise this capital. So how do you, like you said, it's and it's a very very astute comment for a young entrepreneur to make. Raising capital is one art and one science, but building a business is a whole different uh, set of qualities and set of skills. How do yeah. you how do you toggle uh, between both? And how is the building? You've succeeded massively. I mean, truly. I mean, my hats off to you in raising capital with those kind of names, uh, influencers that are worldwide known of uh, as celebrities. How? How did you then transition and toggle into uh, now building this great brand that you have on your hands? Um, building a team. You know, I mentioned the responsibility of the CEO is to, to definitely fund the company and set the vision, especially in the early days. But, you know, you go from spinning every plate to hopefully spinning less plates in the ones where you think you can have the greatest impact. Um, I was fortunate enough to 
yes, attract capital, but also attract other great entrepreneurs to join me um, on building this organization. So when I look left and right, and you know, all across the org, we have great, great, great members of the Daring team. We have people that have seen large scale, you know, conglomerate business, you know, process driven, and we have people that have been entrepreneurs themselves. So we have a real balance of, like I said, passion recognition of building, and also the grit and determination and the, you know, eating, you know, wall every other day to, to just keep going. So I think, you know, most important thing that has been essential for, for getting us here. And I still feel like we're just starting um, is building that team. One to allow me to, you know, yes, go to other assets, you know, different, um, you know, opportunities to, to build and to raise, but also to help me execute on, on what it takes to build the business. So, um, you know, kudos to me for hiring the team, but kudos to my team for taking the leap and us quote unquote being daring and joining us on on the mission. Who was who who was your uh, uh, food scientist that you brought on originally to help you create this great product? Yeah, gentleman Paul Newman. Um, Paul is uh, is an awesome individual. Uh, he heads up the the R and D and innovation team at Daring. Um, years and years and years and years of experience um, building out the Kellogg's business, um, plenty of plenty of uh, patents under his belt, um, and a lot of IP generated. And most recently, he was at Calafia Farms, the oat and almond milk alternative dairy company, sure. and he joined us at Dairy Daring, sorry, to build out to build out the product suite. So feel very fortunate, you know. Under him, he has a he has a roster of awesome, awesome individuals across product directors, scientists, and so on. And it's amazing to see what he does every day in the office. How many employees do you have now, Ross? Um, I think we're at about forty five, so it's very lean. Um, you know, I think one of the advantages of being such a lean organization is it allows you to move quick. You know, I often say we might not win on resources, headcount, capital, but we will win on speed and velocity and cadence that we move at. Like I said, you know, two years in this country and we were in 11,000 supermarkets. I think if that says anything, then, you know, speed is something that's important to us. And um, that nimbleness and that ability to move quick with a 40 plus person team is is something that I think is a real advantage to us. But you, you just talk about speed. One of our uh, our core our core values at ERI, which are printed on all of our, uh, uh, which is on everybody's signature block, is speed matters. Every second counts. There's a lot of smart people out there. There's a lot of smart people. There's a lot of money out there. You got to just execute every day at, at, at the highest highest rate you can. Absolutely. Completely agree. Um, who was um, uh, the, the person or people who came up with the name uh, Daring? I love the name. And I just I just think it's awesome. Yeah, I, that is something I will take credit for. Um, I, you know, I touched on my diet growing up wasn't as uh as plan friendly as it is today let's just say that and it was um a friend of mine who was living a vegetarian lifestyle he was a very fit individual he ran marathons and he looked great and he sort of took a look at my plate one day and said you eat far too much animal protein i said no you know you got to this is what makes you big and strong he said i dare you to go a week without meat um, i'll take that ten dollar bet and let's see where it goes and uh, that's where the name originated from that's i think awesome. To us now, daring is more than a name. It's a philosophy. We're committed to, you know, bringing to light and supporting daring people who are challenging the status quo. Uh, it's about blazing, you know, unconventional paths and creating meaningful change in the world. That is what daring is. And we're very proud to, you know, work with a number of different influencers. Most recently, a campaign with world champion fencer, Miles Chamley Watson, and that really was to inspire different trailblazers who are being daring every single day. And that's what it's all about. So we always say we're more than a product. We're, we're a philosophy and we're a movement. Um, you know, you're in, you're daring for, for your journey and for your story. And I'm daring for mine and, you know, my wife's daring and everyone else has their story. So that's what it's all about. Did your, is your, did your wife move with you from Scotland or did you meet your wife here? I, I met my wife here, actually. I met her in New York. We've I been mean, familiar with each other before. And she's from. She's also um, not from the U.S. She's from She's from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Wonderful. So and we're both out here. And she's a plant-based eater? Uh, for the best, for the most for part, most yes, part. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Great. I think um, it's going to take a little bit more innovation and a little bit more um, investment into other parts of her diet to really make that feel switch. But... 
like I said, this is not, you know, about creating more vegans. This is about giving more great options to more meat eaters. And it's that's so how true. we change it. That's a brilliant point, Ross. Everyone thinks being a plant-based eater is an all or nothing exercise. And I keep telling them, you got to like, like you just disavowed them of that. It's just, it's just getting more options and mixing your diet up a little bit more. So you could, uh, you can have some just really great products that are plant-based to enjoy instead of just everything being the legacy products that we had 30 or 40 years ago. Exactly. Hey, so let's talk about it. So you get here in 2020, you raise some dough, uh, you move to the West Coast. When did you move to the West Coast? I moved to the West Coast actually um, about a year and a, a year, year and a half ago. So I was in New York for a year and a half-ish. And I've okay. been here for the last year, year and a bit. So when did you then know you had a product, you're ready to go, and, and then you launched the product? And how did that yeah. go? And what was the first email, fax, or text message knowing that you made your first, you got your yeah. first order in the door? And who made the first order? Um, a fellow Scott named Jack Sinclair, uh, the CEO of Sprouts Supermarket. Oh. Great brand, great brand. Yeah, great brand. So I was fortunate enough, you know, I reached out to him off of a whim somehow. I managed to find his email, you know, at the, yeah. you can find anything on the internet. Yeah. And said, fellow Scott here, ready to change your business. Yeah. Uh, you know, said, so, you know, so I said, and he said, well, come into Scottsdale and show me what you've got. And he was kind enough to open his kitchen at the headquarters, bring in the right people who controlled the category within Frozen, and they got it right away. You know, they'd seen beyond and they'd seen impossible. And I think they'd seen uh, both the pros and the cons of those products. Take, and uh, he said, take, take our when, audience, when how did that go? Take our audience. Yeah. Talk about the day, who you took, who, who you decided to take with you on the trip. Where did you, where, you know, when did you, how many days in advance did you go down? What was yeah. the pregame plan? Where did you stay? And did everything go to plan or, or were there some somewhat, some, potholes or hurdles you hit while you were down there the big day uh, of the the, uh, the show uh well this was the week i landed here so i was in new york and that was oh. the opportunity uh three or four days into being in new york the email response came in and it was you know where do you stay i, I replied saying well i'm in scottsdale well uh, what an entrepreneur move there you you're an innate entrepreneur to say that that's a rarity. That's rare. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, trying to get someone on someone's schedule two weeks on Tuesday wasn't going to work for me. And uh, certainly wasn't going to work for our cash flow at the time. So we hustled together. Uh, it was me. Um, and I will say I took the remaining product that I had. We took a one-way ticket to Scottsdale. Just you uh, and the product? Just me and the product and a frying pan. I swear, I still have that frying pan. And uh um, and then turned up and I think I didn't really know what to expect, John. Yeah. Um, my expectations were obviously I'm optimistic, but getting the meeting was so exciting to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. to be at a retail headquarters, sprouts, 300 doors, top in the natural channel. It was it was a dream. I was like so excited. I'd seen all the logos of all the brands that were working with sprouts all over, and it was a beautiful office. And um obviously a well more well a warm welcome from a fellow scott yeah um which was was always a good icebreaker and um you know i've been cooking this product now on and off for the best part of a year and a half through innovation so it wasn't my first time at the rodeo but kicking in is you know downstairs and their sort of beautiful kitchen and i brought the food up and i'm nervous because it's getting cold when you travel in the elevator and yeah you wait for that first bite they pick up their product and they look at you and you're waiting and you're that's that's pretty good. And he goes for another and a second and a third and a fourth and the plate's clean. And I'm thinking, yeah, here we go. Uh, <laughs> so, wow. Um, that was that. And, you know, he had his buyer, Scott Reed, awesome, awesome individual. And they said, okay, when can we launch this? And mm -hmm. bearing in mind, I had no product. I hadn't commercially scaled. I hadn't found a manufacturer to take this to full scale. I didn't even have a packaging design ready. This was in a plastic bag. Wow. Um, wow. And he said, when do you want to launch? And I said, um, I'm ready, ready, whenever, you know, I'll have the supply chain built out where we were a U.S. company. We weren't. Um, and he said, okay, how about March? We're doing a review in March and it's two and a half months. So I said, sure. How many stores? All of them. Okay. Oh, this is, 
So first of all, another great entrepreneur move. You just say yes and you figure it out after you after you get the deal. So you said yes. Again, in amazing innate skills. And then to put together packaging that is so, I mean, really, your packaging is gorgeous to do this on such short notice. How did you pull that off? That was just the skill set of um, first employee, one of my first employees. He was a designer and at home, now lives here in the U.S. also with us. Um, it was uh, with my cousin, uh, his partner, and uh, she just designed it. And uh, the packaging's changed since then a little bit, but that was on the shelf for the best part of two years. And, you know, success and sprouts remains, you know, top or the number one in the category. We're doing really well there. And, um, you know, I will say the last thing is I had to then go and set up a U.S. company right. and, and do all that and get the logistics and get the supply chain and get the import. Get some, and get, some and get some money and get some money. Get some money. And that helps. Yeah. yeah, that helps. But um, I think, you know, the overall takeaway is here is like, you know, putting those tight timelines on things. Um, like you said, it, it forces you to move quick. Yeah. And I think, you know, often when you do hire and you do build a team who have potentially done this more than you, they want to push things out. It's your job to squeeze and to, if you want right. to do in 20 days, what does 10 look like? What does right. two look like? Right. And that's something that I think, you know, obviously a lot could have gone wrong, but thankfully we shipped the product and a few things did go wrong, you know, but you know, for that's the best normal. part, that's it's normal. normal. Exactly. Talk, so you got the bookend of the launch, a brilliant launch with Sprouts that has gone sw swimmingly well for two years. And now talk about then and now, where are you now? How many doors do you have now? And where can our, our, our listeners and viewers and our, our and find you today because you, they're going to want this. And then we're going to go talk. We're going to talk about a little bit about my experience with your product. Yeah, absolutely. So daring is available through food delivery systems like Amazon fresh school puff, Instacart and meal delivery services like some basket and perfect foods, hungry root. More impressively, I think is their national distribution in more than 11,000 stores. Wow. Stores like target, whole foods, Albertsons, Walmart, Kroger, uh, of course, uh, you know, Sprouts and, and Bristol Farms and Air One and you name it. I think it's we're unheard everywhere. of. Um, yeah, yeah, we're everywhere. And that's the mission. Uh, our mission is to bring tasty, healthy, plant-based chicken to as many people as possible to drive a change in this food system. And that is what plant-based needs. It's not a niche product. Uh, this is to remove chicken from the food system is, is their actual mission. And we only do that by penetrating as many stores with as many SKUs as possible. So when we launched, we had one product. We're now four. And you'll see a lot of innovation come to market in 2023. Your team was your team was kind enough to send me four, all four of your products. These are the two I tasted last night. And I'm going to tell you, I've been eating plant-based food for a long time. And I have a, a couple data points uh, yeah. that I want to share with our listeners. First of all, your food was delicious. Just Thank you know, you. both the, the breaded and the original. I wanted to try the original. I want to try the breaded because breaded is my favorite after the original. And I figured it'd be a great, you know, uh, a great understanding of what your product tastes like. Um, and it was just on the on the tongue and digestion, just delicious. Um, the other things I always think about is, does it interfere my, with my sleep? And my sleep was perfect last night. I mean, literally perfect. Uh, and I woke up at six and I went and worked out uh, for an hour and a half lifting weights. And I was real strong this morning. So I'm going to just tell you and our listeners. This daring product is not only delicious, a delicious plant-based substitute, but it burns really well in, in my body. And I and I have a pretty sensitive stomach and also sensitive sleep habits. And I'll tell you, I, I would be shocked if other folks weren't uh, didn't have a similar or great experience with your products as well. Just tremendous. So thank you thank very you. much for sharing these. They, they were really, really great. And I'm going to be sharing with my, my son and daughter who are adults, and they, they are married with spouses and this will be in all of our homes now uh, and just a great product. How about restaurants? How about restaurants? Are you getting picked up in restaurants across the United States? Yes, that's a big part of our, our strategy. In fact, launching the company, that was the strategy. COVID put a slight change in that. Right. Um, you know, John, we're in a lot of great restaurants. Um, you look at, you know, Miami, New York, LA, all across the country. We're in some of the top restaurants from Tao to... Delilah Hwood Group in, in LA. Oh, great. Look at Miami. We're in Komodo, you know, number one restaurant in the country, Swan, right. uh, Soho House. Uh, a lot of colleges and universities selling daring, but actually the end of um, 
uh, at the beginning of uh, last month, we did a we're doing a test with Starbucks. So uh, we've been testing Starbucks uh, products with Daring, of course, for the last uh, few months, and the feedback's been amazing. We're hopeful that that progresses, but that's been a really exciting opportunity for us. More and more people learning about Daring, and I think, like I said, that sort of falls into the real value proposition. I appreciate your feedback on the product. Oh. Uh, that is why I started the business. I yeah. was more of an athlete growing up. I cared about health. I cared about what I put in my body. I cared how I felt. And when you look at the landscape of plant-based over the last three plus years, no one's really looked at health. No one's looked at macronutrients. Our product is 90 calories per serving, 14 grams of protein, zero net carbs, very, very low in fat, almost two grams. And that is what chicken is. It's given to be the healthiest protein in the world. That's why people love it. It's versatile and it's healthy. No plant-based meat thus far has been versatile and healthy. It has been, yes, better for the world. Yes, better for animal welfare, but not better for humans. And that is what our mission is. I think that's what the next wave of plant-based is. That's what 2.0, you're seeing headwinds in the category today. Fundamentally, products need to be better. And I think we're, we're spearheading that. So I appreciate it. It's how I feel. Your product can be put on a salad. It doesn't need to be put in between a bun and two pieces of gluten. This is really, really um, you know, different in the industry. That's really great. What's your what's your vision for 2023 and beyond? You have four products now. How many products do you want? If, when we talk again, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll do an interview in person in the in the, in, the, in the coming 12 months as you enjoy and evolve and scale your journey. How many more products do you want to get online in 2023 and 2024? Yeah, number uh, TBD, but uh, we'll definitely double our product. So uh, we want to you know, focus on different use cases. We want to get uh, more convenience to the market. We launched a ready to eat product within restaurants. So right now we're frozen. If we think about the future of daring, maybe it's more convenient. Maybe it's already cooked. Maybe it's already got sauce or flavor. So um, next week, next year, you'll see more flavor expansion and more um, focus on uh, uh, versatility and convenience within our products. How about um... Now that you have 11,000 doors in some of the in the United States and some of the greatest brands in terms of restaurants and hospitality chains, what what how do you set your sights on international growth? What's the right way to do this um, uh, without the wheels coming off? Yeah, um, I'm a big believer in just do one thing really, really, really well yeah. and earn the right to be build an international business. Yeah, um, hundred million, hundred billion dollar wholesale chicken market. Plant-based as a whole isn't even a billion dollars in sales. So plant-based chicken is a couple hundred million. It's not, we're not scratching the surface. Let's stay focused. Let's stay as lean as possible. Let's not get over our skis. We got a lot of work to do in the US before we start building an international supply chain. It is definitely a goal of mine. Right. Uh, but I, I think I think we got to stay focused right now. I, I totally agree with you. You stay hyper focused on the mission. The world will be the door to you to be the be the path to your door. Then they'll be the path. Yeah, build a great brand, and you can you can pump innovation um, right. all day. I'm almost thirty years older than you, so I'm fascinated as you as a young entrepreneur that has. Let me just share with you amazing instincts. So you were born to do this. I'm glad you. I'm glad you left tennis and became an entrepreneur because you're you're in the in, in the in the in the. Uh, in the um, entrepreneur industry, you would be what we call a sure thing because you're just, you got it in you. You already have it in you. How are you leveraging social media? It wasn't a thing when I was 31 years old and an entrepreneur. How does social media play into um, you gaining more ground in the analog world with doors and with restaurants and things of that such? Personally or through the brand? Through the brand. How do, how, how, how do you manage your social media needs uh, through the yeah. brand, and is it something that you saw as a, a huge need, uh, or and, uh, or is it just a want and a, and a, and, a, and on the to do list after you create a great product and after you get traction? Yeah, it's it's a fine line of really focusing on you know where what moves the needle. We don't sell online, yeah. So it's not like we're sh you know steering consumers onto our website to buy yeah. a bundle online. This right. platform is really about showcasing recipes. It's about yeah. showcasing different retailers showcasing different use case experiences um for us you know that that team is led by a phenomenal individual laura and our team um she's doing a great job of building a brand showcasing the the type of lifestyle that our consumers are having um uh, apologize while i plug my laptop charger in um but i think it's very important uh you know brands still win in this place in this space we're in the consumer packaged good business this is not a commodity 
it needs to look sexy, it needs to look cool, it needs to look as inspirational. And I think, you know, today, plant-based meat, you know, is still going through a difficult time and really shaping out what kind of brand you want to be. So it's a great place for education. It's a great place to show consumers, one, how to cook it, and two, educate on why dairy and why plant-based. And we love playing around with it. We're still testing and learning. For me personally, LinkedIn is a big platform. It's a great place to connect. It's a great really? place to get media out. I think it's underutilized, and I'm still learning it as well. But uh, those are the two main focuses for us. Funny you say that. LinkedIn is by far my favorite platform, by far, yeah. and the most valuable. I found most yep. valuable. Um, any f- thoughts on the future of the plant-based uh market uh both both on um both in terms of restaurants and also what you're doing creating great products yeah. and, and getting them into consumers hands so they have more options yeah i think it's you know it's obvious and uh, you just have to turn on the news or linkedin even to see the the different headwinds that this category is facing um and i say this by absolutely no means do i mean to bash different brands or products but i think when you look at the disconnect between the consumption data of why people are choosing plant-based um, and why and what brands are messaging, there's a disconnect. Uh, what I mean is 70 plus percent of consumers are stepping into plant-based to be healthier, to right. eat less meat, to lose weight, to lower cholesterol. Um, and yeah, they're met with products fundamentally that are higher in X and Y, sodium, calories, fat, ingredients. So there's that disconnect. And I think when that is a consumer's experience, shit time uh, consumption data may fall. What is needed is a new wave of innovation, a new wave of products. 2.0, like the technology world evolves, right. so does plant-based right. evolve. Right. Um, you know, you think of the apps and the platforms we used to use, you would have dumped them now. Right. So it needs innovation. Uh, and that is what I think we're doing. So my outlook is extremely optimistic. I think there's been a a diff- it's been a difficult time for retailers and restaurants to know which one to choose. Uh, I think this tough time will fundamentally be unfortunate for many brands as they maybe consolidate or or fade away. But the one thing I think is needed is just more tasty, healthier, great products. And you know, individuals like me and you talking about it, uh, allowing people to pick it up at a Starbucks or a Walmart. It doesn't matter where. It used to be only Air One and Whole Foods. Now you can get it at Walmart. And, and 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 a supply chain is required. Um, more and more investment into a domestic supply chain. Um, I think a lot of brands suffer to make product one area, pack it in one area, bread it in another area across the country. And that obviously affects price on shelf and margin. So a lot of things are required, but I'm extremely excited to see what the next you know couple of years show. I'm ex- extremely excited to continue to see your journey unfold and to meet you in person and we'll do a live interview. Maybe we'll even do a live uh, cooking interview one day in, uh, in, in LA uh, love it. in the near future. I'd love to do that. Um, uh, I think there'd be a lot of value for our, for our listeners and viewers to, to listen to that. Again, let's uh, give a shout out to, you have 11,000 doors, Amazon Fresh, GoPuff, Instacart, Sunbasket, Hungry Root, Imperfect Foods, Target, Whole Foods, Albertsons, Walmart, and Kroger. You can find these great daring products, I dare you to try Ross's delicious, great chicken plant-based products. You're going to feel better. Your life will be better. You don't have to eat plant-based all the time. Just integrate it into your diet. Ross, you are making such a positive impact on this planet. Thank you for being a guest on the Impact Podcast. You're always welcome back, and I wish you continued success in your journey. John, thank you for the uh, wonderful plug. I appreciate the conversation. Look forward to having you to our office, try some new innovation. We'll definitely have that cook off. And yeah, thanks to your listeners for tuning in. I appreciate it. This episode of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Closed Loop Partners. Closed Loop Partners is a leading circular economy investor in the United States with an extensive network of Fortune 500 corporate investors, family offices, institutional investors, industry experts, and impact partners. Closed Loop's platform spans the arc of capital from venture capital to private equity, bridging gaps, and fostering synergies to scale the circular economy. To find Closed Loop Partners, please go to www.closedlooppartners.com. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Engage. Engage is a digital booking platform revolutionizing the talent booking industry. With thousands of athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, 
Engage is the go-to spot for booking talent, for speeches, custom experiences, live streams, and much more. For more information on Engage or to book talent today, visit Let's Engage dot com.